This is the S117 here today. Today we have the Daisy Powerline 1101 WS. Sorry, mine's a little scratched up and stuff from riding a four wheeler with it. You see, this is a stock scope. It's got a 4x32 scope, brand by Daisy. We got a 177 caliber pellet rifle right here. It delivers about 1,000 to 1,100 feet per second in each shot. And all it is is a brake action 177 caliber rifle. Let me see that. And what we have here is white dot iron sights with a standard uh, four times scope. And what we're going to do today is we're going to make this little review. We're going to shoot some pellets at this target we have down there. It's a shoot and see target. And what we're, first what we're going to shoot is these Crossman Premier Destroyer pellets. They're 7.4 grains as you can see. These are probably some of the weirdest pellets I've ever seen in the sense that, uh, well, just the way they're designed, I mean, you it's harder to tell which way you're putting them in, but I mean, you can obviously tell because this is the point. And on camera, it's kind of harder to see, but they have a little point in them, which is actually pretty cool. I shot a tree the other day, and it made a sound similar to a balloon popping. So what we're going to do is we've taken the time to sight this in. I hadn't really gotten the time until just now. And what we're going to do is we're going to set up this gun and we're going to shoot it. The safety is right here. Flip it back for safety off and then flip it forward for on. It's got a pretty decent trigger. Pretty nice trigger. It's a heavy trigger. and The gun overall probably weighs about 10 or 11 pounds. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and set up for the shot. Okay, this ain't gonna work too good. It does not like it zooming in As on that see. down there. There's still tiny adjustments, but really, he I think he sighted in this for squirrel hunting or something. I, or just even target. This shooting. was actually dead on. I was aiming a little bit above it. But you can see with these specific pellets, they are making this perfectly round circle. And really, the sharp part goes so much deeper. We actually pulled some out. I don't know. I think they fell on the fell on the ground, but whenever they shoot into logs, they actually unravel and just make a long string into it. And what they do is that little part that holds it in the gun, that stays behind, but the point and everything else just keeps on going, and it really would do some damage to anything you shoot at. It unravels inside of it, so it, and then it ends up straight. So you can take the size of those bullets, and it's like three of those bullets, but a lot skinnier. But there's like three of those bullets long going inside of something. Honestly, I would recommend this if you were using your pellet rifle for small game hunting such as squirrels or birds. It would definitely put them out of their misery. But as we're saying, the scope is actually not that bad. I said it what kind of was in the last video. But you can tell that now that we've actually taken the time inside it in, it's almost dead on. Because I was aiming probably at the very top of the orange sight. I mean the orange dot. And we hit probably about quarter inch above so let's go go back and shoot it some more uh, I don't know if y'all have seen the last video yet it was of a review of the Daisy Powerline 11A1 it's basically just a 1911 type deal like standard World War 1 World War 2 1911 really a nice gun this wind's a little bit cold so next what we're gonna do is I think this is the Crossman Gold Flight pellet, we haven't shot it. I think it's uh, 8.2 grams. Really, I don't know what it's going to do. I shot this gun. I shot one a little bit. Um, they're a little bit heavier, so you have to account for that. Which, honestly, with I think it shooting a little bit high, I think that will help make the perfect adjustment. For and those. Also, the only gun I've shot out of this was an old gun my cousin gave me. It's really not the best gun, but it's a decent gun. It gets probably about 700 feet per second. We have the same one, don't we? So oh. It's slightly different. So, yeah, but it's almost the same. As you can see, you have to have a special bore, and this one does have it, for it to fit pellets like these, because his won't fit it, because it don't have that little wider opening at the back. 
And if you don't have that opening, it's not gonna let it go. That's why a pellets like these, the standard pellets, are gonna be a little bit looser. So we're gonna load it up and shoot it. See what it does. And I'm gonna go ahead and before it gets too long into this video, I'm gonna apologize for the camera being a little bit shaky. Um, I'm not a very good cameraman. Okay, so those hit off to the side. That one, for some reason, hit a little bit off to the left, as you can see, but definitely oh. helped with how high it was aiming, because I was aiming about the same spot, and it hit about exactly where I wanted to, because if it was over to the left some, it could definitely nail whatever you're going to hit. But if you're going to hit a bird, unless it was something like a mockingbird. Or the little tiny black birds, like the, I can't think of the name of them. I think they are mockingbirds, if I'm not mistaken. The black ones that fly around and land on power lines, and they're not mockingbirds. They're, they're, I think they're like a type of, I'm, I'm not even going to say it, because I feel like I'm going to be wrong. Like so. if you were shooting at something like a cardinal or something, you know, a decent sized bird about this big. Or a squirrel. You would hit it for sure. And I say, with that much power, you would definitely do enough damage to kill it, take it home, eat it. You know, whatever you wanted to do with it, you have the ability to with that rifle. It is a very good rifle. It's a little harder to clean just because the way the safety is. I will post a video of that eventually. I do not have the proper equipment right now. But I would definitely advise you to check out some of these rifles. You may not be able to find them that easy. I found mine at a Walmart for I think 70 or 80 dollars local it was really really cheap for what it is and honestly I would go try to look them up there's not a big market for them out there because that cheap of a rifle people aren't thinking of it as being this like really high quality rifle which really it's not the best rifle but it's not it's definitely not the worst and what I'm saying is if you can get a lighter rifle that would help for the fact that this thing is all wood and steel there's nothing of it that ain't and that's the biggest problem of it and it does it does have a little bit of a kick that's the biggest problem they put a recoil pad i was being an idiot earlier and i was shooting at the iron sights and i had the scope right about here and it kicked back and hit me right in the forehead and i was holding it as tight as i could too like yeah. as tight as you would hold a 30 out six that was about as high I mean, about as tight as I was holding it. So, it has about the power. It feels like you'd be surprised with it. You'd think with it being such a heavy gun, oh, yeah, that ain't going to have much recoil. And with the but I mean, if you. Gun, it's not something. Like, it's unexpected. You know, you're thinking all you're going to feel is like the slight jolt you normally feel from that spring kicking in action and pushing that pellet forward. But no, it's that it's got a heavy spring and it just slams forward and then backwards. And it really pushes you back. And it, not push you back, but you will definitely at least feel it. You feel it kind of like a 22 is the best way I could put it. It's not like a 22 because it's, I mean, it's not that loud as you can tell. I mean, it kicks a little harder. This is definitely a rifle I would recommend buying. I mean, Sit down. the iron sights, <laughs> the iron sights itself are not the best. I, we have tried... Siding what, them in. 10 minutes we spent trying to sight that in? And we couldn't even hit that target. It's probably 25 feet away, maybe. Probably about 15 yards. It's Yeah, 25, 30 feet. Not the biggest distance, but we still cannot connect that shot to the target, and it's really just a pain in the butt. So I really wouldn't recommend using the iron sights. I would get a scope, red dot, something, some kind of op optic that you are comfortable with shooting. But we're going to go ahead and try to use this ammo right here. What makes it special about the other ammo, about this ammo specifically, is that this is like, I think it's plastic or some kind of wax. And what it does is that it's like giving you a little bit of a heavier shot. And it I think that's like 98% steel tip. And then, you know, you've got that extra weight in the back but it's not lead. So you're still doing about the same amount of damage, but you know. The comparison of the two, if you like take them, you can see that the uh, these ones right here are a lot longer 
And, and you can definitely feel the difference whenever you pick them up. They're heavier. They're a little bit fatter, too. As you can see right here, just the slightest bit. And that really kind of helps in a way, but it kind of hurts it in a way, too. But then again, we did side it off on the destroyer ammo, so that does have an impact on the way it shoots. So side in with what ammo you're going to be using and really try to not stray from that ammo unless you plan on using a different or plan on resetting in your rifle that's just my best advice from me to you also uh go check out my buddies that's filming this his youtube channel i don't know I redneck don't know. mechanic uh i'll be sure because i'm gonna help him upload this at school school or something tomorrow so i'll put the link of my channel in the description and this honestly you guys could probably agree this having this extra cameraman instead of me doing it all by myself is definitely a big help for the purpose that it's always kind of not the best camera quality but now that i have somebody to help me with it it's a little better although i am still like really shaky so, and i don't know why so we're gonna take it out and shoot it again also we are gonna do be doing a little bit more reviews because I do have another gun that I want to do like I'm probably gonna do the video today probably gonna disassemble this on a video today also I'm supposed to be getting a Smith & Wesson m and uh, BB pistol today I mean soon for Christmas and like I said I might be getting a Sig Sawyer MCX or MPX they are really a high dollar rifle slash PDW but they are really worth it because they deliver about 700 or 800 feet per second pellet or BB because they have a belt and they're semi-automatic and I think fully automatic in some of them it's really a nice thing to have you can put scopes on them you can put red dots you can leave it with irons and it's really a nice thing to have so what we're gonna do is go ahead and shoot it and finish up the video That was almost a perfect shot. I think it was just the way the wind was earlier. Because that one hit right below it. 7.8 grains is is a little bit heavier. It's still not a whole whole lot. As you can see, I was aiming probably about dead center. Maybe I was aiming right there, but it was on enough to where you could definitely kill whatever you're aiming at. Alright, well, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like. Leave a comment, tell me how I could work on this channel and make it better. And definitely check out his videos and his channel itself. Thank you. Bye.